Hi, everybody. I'm Emma. And I'm Raul. And I'm Trinity. And we're here with Miss Evans. And this is Chatting with the Counselor. So, Miss Evans, you've been a counselor f- here for quite some time. Yes. Tell me about your experience. My experience as a counselor yes. or my experience here? Both. You could tell us about both. Um, so, I've been at Montebello High School. This is my sixth year. Um, this will be my second graduating class, but I've been a counselor for eight years. Okay, interesting. Mm-hmm. What made you want to become a counselor? Um. I think it was just talking to students. I used to help my mom. My mom was a seventh grade teacher at Macy. Um, And it was just talking to students kind of like when they had struggles, like either like their parents were getting divorced. um, They felt like they had no connection to the school. Um, So when talking to them, I was like, oh, like I know I want to work at a school, but I don't want to be a teacher. Um, So it was counseling. Like I feel like I could, you also make a positive impact on the students sometimes just like by hearing them out, being like a school mom, being like a school sister. Um, Yeah, that's what made me become a counselor. Here at this school, do you feel like you have a special bond with your students? Absolutely. So the class of 2024 is a very special class, as the three of you guys know. Um, This is actually my first class that I've been with all four years. Uh, The class of 2020, which was my first graduating class, I started with them their freshman year. And then I got moved to another school their sophomore, junior year. And I was able to come back um, for their senior year. So you guys are are quite a special class. I've been with you guys all four years. And in a couple of months, I have to say goodbye to all of you guys. So that's going to be rough, rough. We're, uh, we're definitely going to miss you. Yeah. Mm. Most likely going to cry. Don't, don't, no. Yeah. Mm -mm. Let's not talk about (laughs) graduation, please. How was your experience starting off as a counselor? Like your first year, was it difficult? Tell it was scary. It. I will be honest with you. It was scary. Um, but I think what helped is that I was a ninth grade counselor. So as the ninth graders were coming in, I was learning with them. Um, you know, it was, again, it was also a very special class. Um, but it was just like, okay, like, am I doing things right? Luckily here at Montebello High School, we have a really good counseling team. So I know I would always reach out to them and be like, hey, like, am I doing this right? What do I need to do? Like, is is this all right? You know, you don't want to mess anything up because it's high school. And obviously here credits count and everything counts like for um, graduation and for you to go to college. So it was just scary, but it was a a definitely uh, a fun experience. That's good. As a counselor, what are some of the challenges that you face? Um balancing everything out like just prioritizing what's important and like just the level of priority um and I think also is not taking things personal you know and I think a lot of people when they come into my office they let me know a lot about their personal things that they're going through like their personal struggles and it's very difficult I still haven't um mastered it but I take a lot of stuff home like whether you guys I I know it's it seems kind of weird but when people like especially like my students are going through difficult times like I tend to take that home with me and I'm always like thinking like hey is like this student okay they came to my office they were crying they were having a bad day like are they okay like you know you're just constantly thinking about everything and what are some of your favorite things my favorite things about being a counselor um I think that I could be genuinely like authentically me with you guys. Um, I love how I could do what I love, but also have fun while doing it. You know, I think uh, like you've probably seen me. I know during zero period, I made a TikTok with like some of our students. So it's it's just those connections that you make and the fun that I'm able to have. Like I'm it's. It's business, especially like this year, I mean business, like senior year, but I also want to make sure that I enjoy our last like months together. So I, I, I make it a point to have fun with all of you guys. We, you definitely make it fun for us. We definitely enjoy having you here. Thank you. Probably one of the best counselors. Oh, thank you. You mentioned your, probably she is. (laughs) Oh yeah. Sorry. (laughs) She is. You're definitely right. Thank you. Um, you mentioned your counseling um, team. Do you mm-hmm. have a good bond with them? How is that? We we do. I think um, everybody has been here at Montebello for quite some time. Um, so, yeah, we get along really well. And I think 
it helps. We're all grade level counselors. So we've all kind of like been through through like each grade level. So we could always like go like I know in A8, I could either go to like Miss Gonzalez or Miss Argamosa. And I'm like, hey, guys, like I have a question. Like I'm kind of like facing this dilemma. Like, what should I do? Um, yeah. So I think we we all have a, a really good bond. I think that's that's one of the things that Montebello like that's their flex. Like we have a really good counseling department. Shout out to my counselors. Um, you've been here at Montebello for six years? Yes. Do you plan on staying or do you have, do you want to move on? Or? Um, so my dream job is actually a high school principal. I didn't know that. Yes. Did you know that? Yes, I did know that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's my dream job. Uh, but you know, I, I, I'm not in a rush when things happen when they're meant to happen. Um, you know, my, one of my biggest goals is people had asked me like in prior years, like, Hey, like, do you want to apply like for an assistant principal job? Do you want to do this? But my main goal is, was I had to graduate the class of 2024. So I said, I'm not going anywhere until I graduate this class. So what the future will hold after June, 2024, I'm not sure, but high school principal is my, my dream job. That's, um, I think you would make a great principal, honestly. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Do you ever regret becoming a counselor? Absolutely not. No? It's definitely uh, something that I love to do. I No. No, not no at regrets. All. Mm -mm. Do people ever barge into your office with attitude? Absolutely. My yeah. office, if my walls could talk, like they probably could write a book. Yeah. And you don't snap back at them? I mean, the one thing like I'll never tolerate is disrespect. Like, don't ever be disrespectful. You know, I, I think I'm a pretty chill person. Um, once you get to know me, um, I think Emma just shared that she was intimidated by me, which was insane. I was scared. Of you. I thought <laughs> never she was mean. She's the nicest person. No, I think it's just once you get to know me, um, like I'm super chill. But when, you know, there's boundaries, like don't be disrespectful. Don't come in my office like thinking you could talk to me any kind of way. Because like, yeah, no, no. No. So you've never been disrespected, like, in your office in any way? Oh, I have. Oh, oh yeah. she has. I, I have. Um, you know, some some have have hurt more than others, but you just move on. At the end of the day, I, I always have to remember that I work at a high school, you know, so sometimes um, when you say something out of emotion, you know, like, I get it. You could be frustrated. You could be upset. And I try to take a step back yeah. um, and I try to talk to you about it. But if you're constantly disrespectful, yeah, that's something I'm not going to have. What's your favorite movie? I'm actually not big into movies, um, but <laughs> I could never like watch a movie. Like I get bored. Um, what about a rom com? Oh, I hold on. No, so I love I love The Wedding Planner. Oh, yeah, that's guys, a good movie. I've, never I've heard watched of that. it before. Really? It's with J Lo. Oh, okay. So I love like The Wedding Planner and Mean Girls and I, um, I don't know if you guys have ever watched Remember the Titans. It's like a football movie. Oh, yes, I have um, with my yes. brothers. Coach Carter. Like they're, yeah, like they're the movies that just kind of like it for me to like a movie, it has to like get my attention within the first five minutes. If not, like I'm bored. Is The Wedding Planner the one with like the M&M's? Was she like? M <laughs> It's because the I don't guy. Remember that scene. Yeah, he like, he's like I only eat the brown oh, yes. M and M's. When, yes, when they were under under like sitting on the tree yeah, at the park. Yes, one. watching oh, yeah, the movie. I've seen that movie. When she said she only eats brown M and M's oh, yeah. because there's no food coloring. Yeah. Lost. Mm -hmm. well, you, you have to watch the movie. movie. Yeah. Oh, the wedding yes. planner. I've that's never watched it. That's your to do list for yeah. on your to do list for Thanksgiving break. Watch oh. it and then come back and tell us how you liked it. All right. What about comedies? comedies um horror no i don't do scary she movies she don't like i don't like scary movies she said this in renaissance I remember when we did the the haunted house oh yeah house but i'm just asking like and like if clowns she like clowns no, why I, would she like horror i am movies? petrified of clowns like i am scared of clowns um scary movies i don't do um comedies are you a fan of adam sandler i mean yeah Oh, Again, like, no. Take no, that as I, a no. No, I think my thing is like I genuinely like don't watch movies. Like I don't like I don't what I haven't T V shows. Oh girl. I, I like love me some reality TV. Oh reality? Yeah. Yes. I was gonna the drama in them is just So like right now I'm watch I was watching The Real Housewives of Miami. Oh. 
the tea is good. Rose looking at me like I'm insane. Oh, those um, are so interesting. Basketball wives. Oh, I watched that with my nana. It's um, intense. What about yeah. Jersey Shore? I used to watch Jersey Shore, like complete GTL, Jimtown Laundry. Rose still I'm looking still at me. Like, 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 I thought, I thought I'm you were gonna like. <laughs> you lost me right there. GTL, you don't remember? Did you guys ever watch Jersey Shore? No, I watched it a couple times with my nina. I thought you were gonna say like the no, the no. I can't say the word. Novela? Yeah. I don't do novelas. No. 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 The one. Okay, I will tell you. TV show. Teresa. Shows. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wow. okay. Tell us all about the novela, Teresa. This is your podcast, not mine. Oh, okay. Oh. Um, the one show that I do love to watch is NCIS. Um, <laughs> NCIS. So it talks about like something happens. Like there's either some like kind of murder involved or like law and order, like all of those kind of shows I love to watch. Um, because if I wasn't a counselor, I wanted to be a detective. Oh, that would have suited me too. Nice. What about Grey's Anatomy? I feel like you're a Grey's Anatomy fan. Have you watched that? No, I haven't. No? I, no. Oh the other one I've watched, I don't know if you guys have watched it. It's like super old. It's called House. It's okay, about yeah, like a doctor yeah. and like he's trying to like figure out what illness they have. Roll is still very lost. Yeah, let I'm me still tell very you. Lost. I don't okay. know what you guys watch. Do you not watch TV? I do, but like. We're going to make you a list of what to watch over Thanksgiving break. And then you have, have to you watch ever, it. Have you ever seen. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, it's okay. Go. Have you ever oh. seen Castle? No. Do you know that show? I think you would like it. Castle. Castle, yeah. Where is it on? It's on Hulu. Oh, okay. Castle. Castle. Adding that to my to do list, Roll. Yours or mine? No, I'm adding <laughs> that to mine. <my laughs> Everything else is on yours. Oh. Yeah. Do you watch like any anime or anything? Mm mm. No. I love sports. I love watching sports. I love sports. Yeah. You're a Padres fan, aren't you? Padres. <laughs> <laughs> I am a Dodger fan. Um, baseball. I like the Padres because of Fernando Tatis. Mm. That's all. Oh. Um, but I'm a Padres fan. I'm a Lakers fan. I'm a UCLA basketball and football fan. Um, <sighs> what I, I've never been to an NFL game. Like, even though, like, I am the biggest sports fan ever, like, I've never been to an NFL game, but I always obviously root for the home team, so I root for the Rams. Um, oh, okay, I got the side eyes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that. The Suns are better. The okay. who? The, the Suns. Suns. Mm. With Devin Booker? Um, yeah, KD. Mm. Mm. No. You'll mm. see. You'll see. I grew up in the Kobe Bryant era, so, mm. like, I've... You know, I've I've stuck with the Lakers through the good times and the bad times, but yeah. yeah. But you'll see. Did you ever get to see <laughs> Michael Jordan play? No. 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 Never. Um, no, I didn't see Michael Shaq? Jordan. Shaq, I did. I saw Kobe, Shaq, um, Kareem. Oh, no, no that's <laughs> bro. <laughs> bro. <laughs> bro, never mind. How old that. do you think I am? Oh, he stood quiet. Oh Lord. Uh -oh. Okay. Twenty-eight. Now you're trying to make some points huh? after you said Kareem. If I no. watch Kareem, no. no. Mm. <laughs> what um what what's it called? What what's decade the, did you grow up in? What what decade? The, like yeah. you know how like our class is considered Gen Z. No, like the nineties. Did you what era? So, so, so I era? I was what born era? I was oh, yeah. born in 1988. Don't you dare make a face roll. <laughs> oh, that's the same year my mom was born. So like the 32, yeah. I'm 35. Yeah. Oh, it's so never mind. My math is off. off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my mom's um, 35. So uh, I grew up in the 90s. It was, yeah, the 90s were fun. The yeah. 90s were, were definitely a lot of fun. What part of the city? Like, what city were you? I actually have lived in Montebello since I was a year old. Really? Oh. Yeah, so I live in the city. Hey. Um, won't tell you guys exactly where I live, <laughs> but I live here in Montebello. You might see me at Costco on the weekends. You know which Costco? The, the one, one in the Monterey, one in Monterey Park. Oh. My brother works Hugo. there. Your brother works there? Yeah. It's so funny. Sometimes I'm like shopping and I hear a Miss Evans, and I'm like, oh my goodness. Who <laughs> Hugo? No, like just in general. Oh. What high school did you go to? I graduated oh. from Sure High School. Oh yeah, she went to the rival school, but it's okay. But she I'm a spoiler, us. a Spartan and an Oiler, so I'm a spoiler. Did you play any sports if in high school? If you could choose. I did. What it. school would you choose? What school would you choose if you could choose? Yeah, if you had to, if there's like no option at all, you have to choose life or death. So like the other one gets crushed. Like, yeah. Ah. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> we don't promote violence. No, the school gets crushed, not the people. Oh, but who goes oh, to the school? People. 
the school alone. <laughs> um, so I will. So I will tell you um, the one thing about like sure that I really liked was their school spirit. Um, I feel like their school spirit up at sure is just completely unmatched. Um, so we're definitely working on that here. But yeah. what I love about Montebello High School, it's just the sense of community. Like you could have different groups of friends. You could be with one group during attrition, be with another group during lunch. Like it's never like, oh, it's just like you just have your group and that's it. Like we don't talk to anybody else. I feel like here um, everybody talks to everybody, you know, so that's one that's one thing that I that I really like about Montebello High School. Do you think our school spirit is improving? Absolutely. I, I think with um, there's been a lot of like things that have been done. Like I know with Renaissance, you guys have been amazing. Um, but I think even in like just Renaissance and collaborating with like yearbook, Euler TV, ASB, I think we're, we're bringing that spirit back. I know um, at the last football game against sure, I had never seen like the student section the way it was. So it definitely made me proud that that we're turning things around here at Eulerville. It looked cool from the sure side. I know, it looked fun. Like you it, were sitting you on, on the sure the side? Way you went? Well, why was, were you I on was that helping, side? and then I went to the student mm. side. Okay. <laughs> 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 why that can't be in there? Why not? It's her podcast. Exactly. Oh. Isn't that what you said? Pew, right. pew, pew. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that was, but I... Uh, Okay. Oh, give me that look. What celebrities have you met? Celebrities. I met, um, oh my God, Jack Nicholson. Do you guys even know who that is? That's no. the guy from, um, what's his, what's that called? No, don't tell me. Don't tell me. Let's look it up. The, what are the you Shining, saying? right? The Shining. Jack. Wasn't that Jack Nicholson? Jack in the books. The Shining, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, wow. Okay. Emma knows her movie. Oh, I do. Emma, I, I love my movies. So Jack Nicholson, I met um, the rapper The Game. Um, do you that? have any pictures? I do. Oh, I met Two Chains. Do you guys know Two, two Chains, yes. the rapper? I met Two Chains. Um, <gasps> Emma's shaking her head no. I don't know. I, I don't know, know The Game. I don't know Two Chains. You don't oh. know Two Chains at all? No. Not, not even one song. Maybe if I heard it. Yeah, I'm not going to play a song right now. <laughs> Why not? Be, no, 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 no. we no, cannot no. play a song by 2 Chains. Oh, here's 2 Chains? Yes. Not the best quality of picture. Um, here is... Whoa, 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 whoa. Here's the game. Mm -hmm. Do you know who the game is? No. Oh, brother. Okay. Is Never. it from, like, the 90s? Um, the game was... I was like, he's a rapper. Um, no, I feel like, he, I think he still even has music. I think if you hear a song, like, you'll be like, oh, it's him. But again, I won't play any music because they're not school appropriate. Is rap your favorite genre of music? I like a little bit about of everything. Like, I love, it depends, like, on my mood. Um, right now, on Pandora in my office, I think I had... It was her. Yeah. Um, so I'm like feeling kind of like chill. You don't know who that is, huh? Oh. You don't know who okay. hers? Um, then other days it's like Bad Bunny. Other days it's Beso Pluma. Other days it's Drake. Other days it's like Kanye. So it all depends. It all depends what mood I'm feeling in the morning. Do you feel like students could be their selves around you? Absolutely. Um, I always say that my office is a safe space. Um, there's no need for you to come in into my office and pretend to be somebody you're not. Um, at the end of the day, like I'm nobody to judge. I've, I've made plenty of mistakes in life, so I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, like this isn't like what you're doing is wrong. Like you shouldn't be doing that. No, we all make mistakes in life. Do you have any regrets about anything in your life? Like from when you were younger or now? I, yeah. Um, I think back to my high school years. I wish I would have been a better student. You know, I, I wasn't a good student at all in high school. Um, I will tell you, and like, to be completely honest, I probably graduated high school with less than a 2.0 GPA. Um, so I wasn't a good student. 
you know, so so that's probably like one of my biggest regrets. But then I also think in in the struggles that you face in life, it makes you who you are, you know, yeah. and it like just brings you everything's supposed to happen when it's like meant for you, you know, so. I might have not been a good student. I might have not gone to like a four year right after graduation. Um, but I learned a lot like on the journey, you know, of community college and then transferring and then going to grad school. Like, yeah, and it made you who you are. Absolutely. Is there any like event in your life that you think was like a really big moment that like you could say that's what made me who I am? I'm trying to think. I, I, I mean, we go back. Growing up, um, so my mom was a single mom. Um, my dad passed away when I was nine months old. Um, so growing up, um, you know, I always saw my mom, like, work really, really hard. I know Roel asked me if I played any sports during high school. I didn't um, because when I was uh, 10 years old, my mom started going to school. Um, she started going to um, Cal State Long Beach. So I actually went with her from uh, when I was 10 years old till I was 16. So, like... After school, there wasn't like any fun activities for me. It was just I would we would I, my mom would pick me up and then we would drive straight to Long Beach, and then we would get back home like at ten. So I think seeing seeing how my mom like worked really hard, you know, to get a career here. My mom's from Mexico, um, so seeing my mom like work really really hard, and then like having to still take care of me, like get good grades and still working like full time was definitely like what, what inspired me, you know? And I'm always like, I'm, I always say I'm never going to let my mom down. So I'm always like, whatever. And my mom always told me, um, when I study, she said, be whatever you want to be, but you're going to be the best at it. So it's always that a, a thing that I have in mind that I can't let my mom down. Um, is a mom, the, is your mom the person you look up to? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think some people have met my mom. Um, yeah. So my mom is like, yeah, my mom's my best friend. Do you have a strong connection with your mom? Absolutely. So we travel together. My mom retired a couple of years ago. So now we travel together. Um, you know, it's at the end of the day. And that's one of the things I always tell students, you know, I, I get it. Sometimes we don't agree with the things that our parents do. And 17, 14, 15, 16, 17 year old Andrea didn't understand. 35 year old Andrea understands what my mom, like now I understand why my mom did the things she did. So, so I know it's one of the things that I always tell you guys like, Hey, like appreciate your parents. They, they, it might seem like they're just trying to ruin your day. I promise you it's not, you'll see it. You'll see it someday. Like they, they push you um, because they want you to be successful and they maybe don't want you to struggle. Maybe the same way that they had to struggle. Do you have a message for any kids that lack a parental figure in their life? Or like don't feel that strong enough connection yeah. with their parents? I think sometimes, you know, having a trusted adult, it doesn't have to be a parent. You know, it's just find somebody, obviously, um, you know, with, like I said, I lost my dad at a young age. So I would give anything to have my dad back. Um, so I always, I always tell people like, appreciate your parents, you know, because if there's ever a day that they're gone, um, you don't want to regret that, that you maybe like you fought with them over something, you know, it's just appreciate them. But I think for those that don't have a strong connection, or maybe like parents, like biological parents aren't around, um, is just have a trusted adult around you, um, you know, who could guide you, who could give you like, good advice on life. Um, adulting isn't easy. And I think so many times, like, kids in high school are in such a hurry to grow up and I'm like don't don't be in a hurry don't be in a hurry because adulting I mean working full-time and like going to school like it's not it's not just rainbows and pretty flowers you know it's it's hard so just appreciate those people who are always there for you um for students that don't feel a strong connection to their counselors what do you suggest I think get to know us. Um, like I said, we have a, a pretty strong team. Um, and I, I think a lot of people think like we're not relatable. We people might think like, I mean, I don't know, like if you guys like told me, like, what was your impression of me the first time around? Yeah. You know, so it's just we might not seem relatable because at the end of the day, like it's like kind of like a figure here at school that you're just like, oh, like they've never been through what I've been through. And I'm sure some of us have. You know, some of 
Um, and as you keep doing the the chatting with the counselor, you'll get to to know the counselors. Um, but I think we're all pretty relatable, and maybe we haven't been through exactly what some students have been through, but we've also been through some things, you know. So just reach out to your counselor and talk to them. Get to know them. They will be there for you. Trust me. They they will. I'm telling you, we have a, a really good team. I think the school is pretty good with our like connections to people. Like we don't have a certain like just stay in a click. We are very like um, relationship oriented. Mm-hmm. And that's definitely one of my favorite things about Montebello High School. Do you feel like the students look at you guys as their parent guidance? I've been called mom so many times. <laughs> like people will come into my office and they're like, mom. And I'm like, they're like, I mean, my sevens. Um, I think people do. Um, I also think people maybe like, for example, in my case, like some of some of the students look up to me as like their big sister, you know, their big sister who is like offers a listening ear, like no judgment. Um, yeah. So, yeah, even though I've been called mom, it's more of a big sister i was one of those students yeah. <laughs> i still get called mom sometimes sergio sometimes he'll be and he'll be like mom i mean Ms. evans you know i know i know that trinity calls you her school mom yes i sure do my mom gets a little jealous but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's it's all love it's all love i think at the end of the day um the more people that you have in your corner um supporting you the better you're gonna that you're gonna be you know there's enough love for everybody. Do people ever go in your office just to, like, chill? Yes. Sometimes we all need a break. Um, you know, sometimes I will tell you that sometimes I need a break, at like, and I'll go over to, like, A1, or I'll go to the attendance office with Miss Nancy, and I'm just like, I just need a break. Like, I just kind of, like, just need five minutes to myself just, um, just to kind of decompress of maybe everything that's going on. So I know sometimes kids will ask me, like, hey, Miss Evans, is it okay if I stay in here in your office or in the lobby just for five minutes, I'm dealing like with some anxiety. Um, and yeah, whenever people are ready to talk, then I talk to them. But I know sometimes people just need time. Does it ever get annoying to you if people just go in there to like chill in the office? with you? Not at all, because I, I think at the end of the day, people are going through their own things. Um, sometimes people aren't ready to talk about it. Um, so if you just need five minutes of peace and quiet, then five minutes of peace and quiet it is. Would you say that your office is just like kind of a safe space where anyone can come in and just like? That's my goal. That's my goal where people um, know that they could come into like A8 in my office and just just feel a safe space where they could talk about everything. So that's definitely my goal. And I hope that students that have come in there like feel that way. Do you, Do you think? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, do you feel that you've made a difference in the years that you've been here and your counseling team has made a difference? Absolutely. I think when you might not see it like in the moment, um, but I know I've gotten like text messages from like former students um, that have literally like made me cry just because, you know, they kind of express like their gratitude or just something that you did for them that to you was like something simple that like you went out of your way, but to them it was huge, you know? So it's sometimes like getting those messages um, or some kind of note or just sometimes even when students just say a simple thank you. Thank you, and it, it makes a world of difference. So I've always said that if in my entire career I was able to make a positive impact on one kid, then I did a good job, you know? Yeah. Do you think younger you would have ever expected for you to be in this position you are like now? <laughs> Absolutely not. And I think especially, you know, growing up in a single family home, um, the statistics are kind of against you. Yeah. Um, and now I, I like it's funny sometimes because, like I said, I'm over here telling you guys, you guys need to pass your classes. You guys need to do this. You guys need to do that. But high school Andrea was barely passing her classes, you know, but I think it also that's it also allows me to to understand maybe like the struggles you, you guys are going through. Obviously, when I was in high school, social media wasn't as big. Um, I think I got a cell phone like my ninth grade year. Um, so, so it's definitely interesting. And I laugh at it sometimes that I'm like, oh my God, here I am guiding kids like to graduate high school and to get into college. But yet I was a bad student. 
You mentioned that you um, encourage people in high school. Did you have someone to encourage you? And if not, do you think that would have made a difference? I did. Um, in high school, I I definitely had like a group of like people that would always like check in. I think to me, it was just high school. I was like, why am I learning this? Like, when am I going to need world history? You know, like it was just, I, I just had the, the incorrect attitude about high school. Um, but I definitely, I've always had like a group of people like to always like push me and like push me to succeed and push me to do better. But I think it was more of a me thing that I was just like, why am I, why am I having to sit in a class that like of a topic that isn't interesting? So I think once I went to college and I started like, I majored in obviously in psychology, um, I was like, oh, okay, like I could do this. And then when I went into grad school to study counseling, then like high school me and grad school me are like two completely different people. Um, so that's why I always, I always say, you know, like don't, don't think of school maybe just like high school, you know, because I feel like a lot of the times like kids are like, why am I like, why do I have to take four years of English or why do I have to do like all these history classes? Like this isn't something that, that I want to do, um, but I, I also tell people like post high school plans don't necessarily mean a four year school. Like you could go to a community college, you could go to a trade school, like you could do a lot, you could go into the military. Um, the success depends on you. You can't compare yourself to other people. And I think this generation is so constantly like, oh, well, my cousin is doing this. So that means I have to do that because if not, like my family is going to going to think less of me and no like you guys like we all have to stop comparing ourselves to other people so true is there a member of faculty when you were in high school that made like a difference in your life when I was in high school um actually one of the assistant principals um and I see her often because she's the one that helps me plan a lot of renaissance things it's Miss Honda um, so she was an assistant principal at Sure, um, and she always just she was always there. She was always there whether I needed like to talk to her or anything like that. She was always there. So it's just really nice to now like she was here yesterday actually. Um, so it's really nice to kind of see like that growth that like she met me as like little high school Andrea, and now it's like she comes into my office and then we plan things for Renaissance. I think you're definitely that faculty member for us. Thank you. Yeah. I feel like I could go to you for anything. Okay, please don't make me cry. <laughs> I'm a big crybaby. But thank you. Is this year going to be like the hardest year cool. in terms of like she us going away? writing the letter already I, to us. So when yearbook asked me to write a message for the senior class for the yearbook, I cried. Like yeah. I cried. Um, again, I'm not ready. Um, and I will start crying right now. Um, but I think it's, you know, with you guys, you guys had a different um, high school experience. Your ninth grade year, like it was distance learning. I remember like going into like the health and ethnic studies to try to introduce myself. And all I would see were, were the little like black boxes because probably you guys were still in bed under your covers. I was asleep. <laughs> of course. Um, so so it was just, you know, I, I know high school hasn't been the easiest for you guys. Um, but then even like from 10th, through 12th grade it's been super fun like I'm just like okay like we're gonna make this like a special year so it's definitely once graduation comes man do you think you'll make the connection with another class the way you did with us every class is different so like my first class the class of 2020 they were special it was my first class you know so they um there I think there's enough room in my heart for whatever class comes um and there's like, I don't compare classes. Like, I can't say, like, oh, the class of 2024 is better than the class of 2020 because X, Y, and Z. Like, I don't compare them at all. Um, they've come in a different, like, each one has been at a different stage in my life. Um, class of 2020 is going to be, it was, it has always been special. Class of 2024 is going to be very special. So hopefully, you know, if I get a, another group of kids, then that connection is just still there. You know, you just always got to be you. Are you going to go read that letter on stage? No, that letter is actually in the yearbook. 
Um, yeah, that letter. Uh, you, no, you cannot get me to read that letter. Mm -mm. Are you not? able to give us a speech at graduation? I would like. You that. should go. I would Thank like. You, you should go. Wants to see me cry. Yeah. I have an ugly cry. It's. I've you want to see you go up and give okay. us a speech? <laughs> <laughs> we would love to see. Like that's. I think that's something that twin, a class that's of twenty twenty four. We would to. appreciate. Yeah, it. we would appreciate a speech. It. Yeah, for you yes. going up there and like I giving us a speech. I would like be like hello and then start crying right away. <laughs> probably we would cry with you don't no, we would cry no. i would probably yeah. get on the, the makeup stage like crying. you girl like girls are gonna have like nice makeup no we're not trying yes, to no we're matter. not trying to cry it's okay we would it's appreciate okay. that yeah, would, that's something like really i look like forward that. to yeah. and other people look forward to i believe yeah I to see me ugly cry no no, no you to speech. give us a speech on stage on graduation um day, i think one of the things that i will ask mr duarte is i don't want to read the names like i and i'll explain to you why you should no, like I rather be at the bottom of the ramp to give you guys each a hug as you come down the ramp after you re you've received your your cover to your diploma. Um, because if you think of it, if I read names, I'm only on one side. So what about the other side? Oh, true. Um, so I rather be at the bottom of the ramp um, to just welcome you guys with a big hug. So you think you're ready for June 5th? Absolutely not. <laughs> mm -mm. Not at all. You've been with us all four years. How did you like move up? As a counselor from each grade. So here at Montebello, that's one of the things that we do. We go by grade level. So once we start ninth grade, then we... Oh, are, you stay with that class? We stay with that class. So you guys, um, so with you guys, it was ninth grade year. And then up until I graduate. So you reset next year? No. So next year, I'll actually um, go to 11th grade. Oh. And Miss Ramirez will go to ninth grade. So then I'll have, I would have the class of 2026. Wait. You'll have Hugo, I think. <laughs> yes, Hugo. Yeah, because I would have the current sophomores as Hugo, their jun as their Uzi. as juniors. Yeah. yeah. Are you excited for uh, upcoming classes? Upcoming classes, like yeah, the new kids? Year class of yeah. Yeah, I think you know it's just um, getting to know people, you know, and and I'm very like I I like learning about people and learning their names. Um, like when I see people in the hallway, I don't like just saying hi. Like I like to say, hi, Emma, how are you? You know, um, just to make people feel seen as opposed yeah. to just like a simple hi. Um, so it's just a little scary because then I'll meet this new group of kids as their juniors, you know, so I didn't have the first two years to connect with them, but I mean, it'll be fun. So about the speech, <laughs> <laughs> nobody wants to see me ugly cry. You're actually not an ugly cry. Oh, yes. I, I do an ugly cry. Oh. <sighs> ugly cry. Have you seen her cry, Trinity? I sure have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's okay. She's seen me cry, too. Yeah. I've seen every a lot of people cry. Oh, that's a challenge. We're up <laughs> yeah, for the challenge, is. Emma. <laughs> have you ever seen me cry? I think so. We're up for the challenge. I'll be looking for you everywhere. <laughs> is she crying? Is she crying yet? Is she crying? Just kidding. Yeah. We've been to, we've all, since middle school, right? Yeah. The three yeah. of us? Yeah. yeah. LMI? Yeah. yeah. Oh, brother. So you guys have known Mr. Duarte. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. oh he's definitely known me. I was in his office like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and look at you guys he's now. He's not the only one. <laughs> and look at you guys now. Responsible young adults. Yes. Getting ready to graduate high school. Have you want to fit? <laughs> Jeez, what's up? Is the timer on on the? Wait, is it still the, rolling? No, no, no. I was talking about the the you know the countdown right. in the. A I building? think they put in it the um, after second semester, like once we come back from winter break. That's when they put um, it. That's when they put it. I think that's ready. when they put it. I'm not ready it. for that. I'm not ready to see. Feels that. like it's gone by like so quick, but like so slow at the same. And time. And I think that's yeah. one of the things that like I'm checking right now because I know I have it on my Instagram. Like I have a timer. Hold on. Yeah, not the last a timer, time the you countdown. Did it, you said, I believe it was nine months until graduation. Yeah. What That's is this scary. called on? Are you guys um, ready? No. Oh, countdown. Graduation is six months and 22 days away. <gasps> so, oh. Six months and 22 days away. And then the next day we come get our diploma, no? Yeah. The six. Yeah, I believe so. Mm -hmm. And we could leave or we got to stay? Oh, my God. I don't know how that's going to work this year. So make sure you guys all buy a yearbook. You make sure um, the, just the, the diploma is my birthday gift. There you go. 
<laughs> oh, so maybe I could keep it and oh, we could on, keep you another it's year. It's on the exact day. Okay, well, so maybe like your birthday gift will be like, we don't give you your diploma and then you come back another year so we don't have to, you know? No? No. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> if you guys could stay another year, would you? Yes, I would. Yeah. Just for my seven. <laughs> Just for my seven. <laughs> I want to be like, hey, Mr. Duarte, you know, all these kids, they failed. Can we bring them back? He's going to be like, how many? 300. Be like girl by <laughs> the percent rate of graduation. <laughs> yeah, what's your percentage? How what is your percentage? Um, we will see once people start finishing their credit recovery classes. So I can't. Uh -huh. <laughs> Are you in credit recovery? Yeah. Have you been doing it? I finished one right away, but then the second one I got lazy, so I'm still. I finished the first one like in two weeks. Okay, so I think it's like as we get closer, like. Um, january february march like i'll be able to like start saying like okay like like I, I right now i know who for sure is not graduating because they're like very low on credits um but there's a lot of students that like need to complete some credit recovery classes pass all their classes do all that to make sure that we graduate on june 5th i think i'll make it you will make it <laughs> you better make it I know. I I she said it. you better so you better yeah. you, the three of you better make it let me tell oh, you i'm making it Oh yeah, Chenny B's making it. <laughs> She's making. It. I'm watching you roll. You better make it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think we're a very special class. I think yeah. so. Yeah. We've been through a lot. Yeah, and especially like a lot of kids. Like we've come together. Like maybe some from elementary. We've we all connected together. with them too. Yeah, mm -hmm. and middle school too. I'm telling you, it's a. Uh, it's a very special it's a very special class and not just for like my own reasons but it's just it's a special class to you guys um just the just who you guys are as individuals and again the things that you guys have been through um whether some people like to share or not like you guys have been through a lot as a class um but you guys are are definitely a special class once you guys leave i know montebello high school is really gonna miss you guys and that's why you We're should give a speech. You. Oh, yeah. brother. Okay. Could this be my speech? And we'll just play it on June 5th. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be crying from the... <laughs> no, because I'm not crying right now. Just go up, miss. No. Ugly cry. There's no, there's no time because we always like have like the valedictorian and then... Um, Do you guys pick the valedictorian yeah, now was, or towards the end? I think um, after we come back from winter break. Like we probably have an idea, but once... Um, Is it Sean? I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> it probably is, Sean. Um, who knows? You don't uh, want us to say that, Sean? No, I don't know. I'm not going <laughs> to tell you who it is. Like, I'm not going to be like, spoiler alert. Leak right? It. Information has been leaked. Um, so there's, a, they're also, they have a, a student, like a speech contest, and uh, students will go into Mr. Duarte's office. They read their speech. Um, so there's a student, like a student speech component, and there's a guest speaker. There's no time for me. Sorry, yeah, there's time no. for you. Yeah, no, 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 no. We'll no. make the time. There's somehow time for you. We all protest outside the school. <laughs> no, <laughs> please should, don't. We should plan like a beach day, and then she can give her speech. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll do that. Okay. I am not. No, June 5th, no. Nope. Everybody's and then we play it on June fifth. Yep, we uh, should we should just <laughs> gather the class of twenty twenty four like outside in the courtyard, and then or you can make your and then you give us a speech. I'll be like, "Hello." Just kidding. And then I'll. Stop you don't get there. like anxiety talking in front of so many people, or like nervous. No, I've gotten better. I yeah. know when I was in college, I like hated it. Like I took a public speak speaking class. And the first time I went up there, I was like, my hands were sweating, like, and I was like standing at the podium and I was like, does everyone <laughs> actually look or there's people on their phones? For what? For the speeches? Yeah. I think they like print out a, a paper they could look on oh. their phones. Um, but I think with time, like I've gotten better, you know, when we, when we have, like when we have grade level assemblies and I have to talk to you guys about it, like about certain things, like I can't be nervous. Like if I'm nervous and you guys are going to be like, I can't trust this lady with the information she's giving me, you, know? you know, so a lot of students. So. Yeah. So, I mean, you just, I think in, in life, whenever you're speaking to somebody or you're speaking to a group of people, like you always have to have that confidence, like just have the confidence that, you know, what you're saying is correct. Um, like don't lose don't lose confidence in yourself because people will notice that right away. 
Is there like something that you do to make you less nervous yeah. when speaking in front like of people? Something that helps or do you just you? have confidence? Like yeah. I think it's taken some time, but now I'm just like, I'm confident. You know, I need to get the information out. Um, like, you know, I'm just like, okay, let's do this. Like, let's do this. You don't um, think about it too much. I, I don't, because if I start thinking about it, I'm like, oh my God, what if I like say something wrong? What if I this? What if I that? Like, I, I can't. Do without thinking. You just, you just go <laughs> for it. You just go for it and go w- in with the information that you have to share and like, let's do it. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Like when I get super, you could hear it in my voice. Like I get all shaky. But you know what? I think it's actually like we hear it. Like nobody else hears it. Like it's I think conscious telling it, us. it is because yeah. I, I don't think like when you go up and you're like, uh, 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 <laughs> hello, like, no, it's just, I think in your head, you're like, oh my God, I'm breathing heavy. Like I'm yeah. stuttering. I'm this, but it's just us because I've like, I've done that a couple of times and I was like, oh my God, I was stuttering and people were like, no, you weren't. And I was like, oh. Okay, never mind. Yeah, I feel like I can't talk in front of people. You think about it too much. Yeah. He does. Yeah, that's true. You can't think about it too much. Just do it. Just go for it. Like, imagine if Devin Booker about to shoot a game-winning <laughs> shot. He's going to be like, well, the probability. No, he just like he goes for it. He might pass it to KD. You the just back. have to. KD em- goes for the three. You just have to embrace <laughs> your, your D book and just shoot. You just shoot your shot. What's your favorite sport? Like, what's your basketball? Basketball. Basketball is my favorite sport. The Lakers. Lakers huh? The Lakers. Mm-hmm. I don't like right. the Lakers. What made you get into basketball? I like basketball the Suns. Like, <coughs> your favorite. What? what? I'm sorry. What? <laughs> yeah, roll over here with his. I like the Suns. <laughs> so, what made you like get into basketball? Um, so growing up, um, my uncle, uh, my mom's oldest brother. Um, would always take me to um, the UCLA, the Wooden Classics. Mm-hmm. So he would always like expose me to like UCLA basketball, UCLA football. Um, he was a Laker fan, um, but then when they lost, like suddenly he became like a non-Laker fan when they would lose. He would be like, "Oh, look at your team, first place loser." Um, so he gave me a hard time about that, but he like really exposed me um, to all the sports. So that's definitely where my love of basketball came. Oh, sons, sons, yeah, yeah no. Mm-mm. <laughs> I like the Golden State Warriors. She's giving you the look. Everyone so. will see. The Warriors. I like Steph Curry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But Lakers for life. Roll. <laughs> your top sushi. Ooh, your top so sushi. okay. Like, like Trinity said, I'm like the place. Yeah, yeah, where from? What kind? Oh my god. Okay, so I'm gonna like. It's a local business. So if I see you guys there. <laughs> now I know. Um, I love going. I probably go once a week to OG Sushi on um, Montebello Boulevard in Beverly, where the Starbucks is. Oh, okay, I know where that is. Yeah. Um, I love their. I love everything. Um, but they have an Angry Tail roll. Oh, delicious. Delicious. There's also a place in the city of industry. And that's good. I was just in Vegas this weekend, and there's a uh, an all you can eat sushi. So my boyfriend and I just ate sushi galore. It was delicious. Yeah, but OG sushi in Montebello. Fire. I don't know where that is. Kind of other foods do you like? You've lived in Montebello, and you don't know. Where I don't is. know where OG sushi so is. So rem- okay. it's on Montebello, Montebello and Beverly. You know where the Starbucks is, like the Pollo Loco. Yeah, I think so. Okay, the so Pollo Loco, Starbucks, and then OG Sushi is, is right there. Is it in over here, like somewhere? I know, not over right here. There. Oh, over there, yeah. I don't know where we're at the room, oh. but. Okay. Isn't guess. it by like LMI? Uh, going towards, like going to the mall, kind of. Yeah. yeah. Why are like, you yelling? <laughs> <laughs> it's because like when I play at home, I have headphones on and my mom says I yell. When I'm telling her, I'm not yelling. But I think I do yell. You do. Oh. Yeah, you need a whisper. You said, what other food do I like? Do you like Wingstop? She's never tried it. I haven't tried Wingstop. You guys, we have to get her to try it. I don't you know. Want to suggest you <laughs> Have a Wingstop party? Hey, lu- oh, l- lunch in her Wingstop. office, Wingstop. <laughs> every be, every type of wing. Look. You've actually never tried Mm-mm. Wingstop? <laughs> you like wings? <laughs> <laughs> so there's just this... Um, 
with <laughs> wings. Wings apparently are not my friend. So apparently you're supposed to just get the wing and then just like take off the meat and just mm-hmm. eat it. So every time I like bring the wing close to me, I breathe it in and I always ask for like spicy wings. So then I end up like choking. <laughs> Dip it in ranch. Yeah, no. Um, Why not? I, like, You're not I, a ranch fan? I do. I do like ranch. But I think the thing that I always do is I get it and then I'm like, and then I'm like, like dying. So then I'm like, I don't want this anymore. Yes, what's happening? I, I don't know. Apparently I was never taught like how to eat wings correctly. So yeah. Is, when I eat wings, I, my mom says. Uh, I bite it right off the bone. Sorry. Yeah, me too. Just she says that I don't eat them right. I leave chicken on it. <gasps> oh no, you're not supposed to. I do to. that. <laughs> I don't get it. So no, see, no, no, what I, I like do instead chicken, of doing right that, like I just take the yeah. chicken apart. And then I just. No, I, mean, I leave I, some stuff on it. She gets it. And it's just the bone. I'm like, what? There was nothing on there. I guess that's the right. I guess that's you and me, I that's don't. That's the correct way to eat it. Like we you don't leave nothing on the bone. Oh, I leave it out. <laughs> I only eat the outside. Do you leave anything? No, I don't. Okay, so Trinity. You eat the whole thing? Like, well, not you leave it spotless. Yeah, yeah. basically. So apparently only Trinity knows how to eat wings. Is that's the like perks of growing up with like a household full of guys. You end up eating like a guy. <laughs> so Trinity's going to give us um, Eat Wings 101 classes. Yeah. What's your favorite <laughs> burger, please? Well, you don't like burgers. Go. Let me find out you don't like burgers. I do love burgers. Um, you ever uh, tried Tommy's? Tommy's, the one which Tommy, the one where they sell the the chili burgers. I don't Ooh. like chili burgers or chili cheese fries. <gasps> the one where like they sell the burgers. Oh. You don't like chili cheese fries? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I was like, you were like three seconds delayed. You were like, she was like, hold on, uh-huh. no. She said, Wait. <laughs> so burgers. Sorry, I um, in and out. I, I feel like you could never go wrong with In-N-Out. Um, In-N-Out is, like, I just, yeah. What's I, your go-to order from there? Animal style? So, no. Four so. eggs burger? What? what? I, I ate that before I ate it. I killed it. No. I c- definitely not. And then I still eating fr- Oh, there was one night when we came home from um, Six Flags. Mm-hmm. I got a four eggs burger with some animal fries. I finished that, and I still ate two other burgers from someone else. My oh, cousins. Oh, goodness. I was cool that night. Burger. That's not normal. No, but it, it was twelve. It was twelve. That's not normal. It was twelve um p.m. Is that nighttime? You were like twelve a.m. <laughs> oh, you get my point. It was t- it was midnight. It was midnight, right? And I'm eating, and I'm like, when I wake up, I'm like, I could have ate more if I was eating in the morning. Oh no, no. My go-to order at In and Out is pretty simple. I get a cheeseburger, um, no tomato, extra lettuce, extra onion, um, fry light. With the Dr. Pepper and then chilies, either chopped chilies inside or chilies on the side and two packets of spread. And then I dip my fries into the spread. Yeah, I, but like eggs. Some chilaquiles. Chilaquiles oh. are good, but like oh. usually like in the mornings, like Monday through Friday, nobody has time to make like chilaquiles before school. No, um, <laughs> so you know how some people like just eat like scrambled eggs. Like I can't do eggs. I can't do cereal. Like if I eat cereal. I put my cereal in a Ziploc bag and I eat it dry because I don't like milk. That's how much you don't like milk? Yeah, I don't like milk. Are you, you don't like milk? No, I'm not lactose intolerant. I just don't like milk. The so taste what's is... happening? I don't <laughs> know. Seriously. Yeah, I don't like the taste. <laughs> milk is... Mm-mm. When milk? she said when she mentioned chicken salad, it reminded me of that TikTok where it's like... Where she's like... Y'all like mustard? Do you know what I'm talking about? I hate mustard. All right, guys. She's like, what you, you? got? And he's like, a chicken salad. Do you know what I don't know what no. you're talking about. How about you? You like mustard? Yeah. Do you like mustard? I don't like mayo. I like I love mayo. I could eat a whole spoon of mustard. So I think I don't like mustard because when I was little, my mom had to hide the mustard like way in the back of the fridge where I couldn't reach it because I would get it, open the bottle, and just like squirt it. I could do that. You know the packs you give at school? I used to go like, "Mm," and just eat the whole pack normally. Yeah, but now like even the smell of mustard grosses me out. I'm a really big fan of mustard. I'm going to bring you a whole... Mustard. I love ketchup. Don't torture wow. her like that. Wow. Wrong. You don't do that. Wow. I'm joking. I'm she's gonna not going to give you that speech if you keep it. I know, she's not. Mm-mm. I'm going to say speech. I'm going to say speech. Crossed out. I'll bring you a tub of mayo. We're going to process. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be like a mayo mustard war. I win. <laughs> I swear I start vomiting when I like smell it or I like the mayo. I mm. use mayo for my grilled cheese. 
What? Like grilled cheese. My mom says she doesn't oh put mail in my stuff, but she does. But like when it's a big chunk of mail, I don't like it. We're gonna all bring rolls and mayonnaise. <laughs> all right, and I'm gonna bring mustard and ketchup. I don't like ketchup either. I love. Ketchup. I love ketchup. I, love I can't ketchup. eat ketchup There's with fries. Wrong with you? <gasps> I eat. What? I eat um, fries with mustard. No, no, not wait, mustard. Wait. Not mustard. <laughs> ranch. Oh, ranch. Yeah. And I can't put hot. I mean, um ketchup on my hot dog either do Just you guys put mayo on your hot dog no. No. no no like i know like sometimes i'll do like at home we'll do like mexican style hot dogs like with crema oh not yeah mayo. my like, grandpa would do mm-hmm. like that with I like s- the sour cream but like crema mexicana um so with that and then the tomatoes the onion and then the ketchup and the yeah hot. i don't know what mayo he may- mayonnaise he used but it wasn't like that i don't know if it was crema it was probably was. crema i just put mustard with relish Oh, I don't like relish. When I eat my fries, I put pepper in my ketchup. What? You guys like relish? I like relish, yeah. Uh, it depends. That's a no for me. You don't, So you don't like pickles? Oh, no. I Again, I ate way too many pickles when I was little. <laughs> have you ever been to Sam's Club? No, Costco oh. for life. All right, have you ever like been driving in Costco with those carts and just crashed it? <gasps> like the carts? Like No, yeah, I'm like, a pretty oh. good driver at Costco, too. I was speaking of driving. When did you first learn how to drive? Yeah. Are you a good driver? I'm a good driver. I feel like I am. My boyfriend says I'm not a good driver. <laughs> but I feel like Why, I am. Why? You're like a crazy driver? Um, I don't. Do you road rage? I have a little bit of road rage. <laughs> um, but he said he's like, oh, like you're, I guess I don't like holding the steering wheel like this. Um, Like I hold it just with one oh, hand. Or oh, like. Okay, tampoco. Like, no. <laughs> no. Uh, like, like if you're on the low rider and you're just riding. Like, no, oh, like oh. I just, you know. And then like the hydraulics. Just, oh, okay. My car does not have hydraulics. <laughs> um, but he says I'm not a good, I'm not a good driver. I think I'm a good driver. Um, you know, sometimes I get upset because like people cut me off or people are too slow, and I'm like, hello, like let's keep it moving. I got places to be. I almost crashed into a sushi place once. <laughs> oh, oh. Have you ever crashed? Yes, they actually. Was they he? hit me. Oh. They hit me. Yeah. Has it ever been your fault? No. No? Never? Mm-mm. Knock on wood. <laughs> no. But I learned how to drive when <laughs> the year, uh, right after the summer after I graduated high school. So I've been driving since I was 18. Does everybody know how to drive here? Do you know how to drive? Yeah. Yeah. He Do says, you? yeah, almost crashing into a social <laughs> place. No, like, I Sir. don't drive, but, like, my cousin took me to drive. He wanted me to get on the freeway. Oh, oh no. 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 So, like, I drove <laughs> to the house, and I actually got there alive. I was like, you got there alive? Yes. He said, I prayed. You prayed like, I had never drove, and I was like. Have you ever been driving, and then you get somewhere, and you don't know how you got there? Or, like, when no. you're driving, and you just, like, zone out yeah. and forget where you're going? No. No? No. <gasps> oh. You? <laughs> I did that one time. No, I think it's just, you know, obviously when you're behind the wheel, it's so scary because you could hurt yourself. You could hurt other people. Yeah. Um, so I know. It's scary. I know one of the, like, I know one thing that my mom really doesn't like is that, like, sometimes I'll be, like, if traffic is slow, I'll be texting and driving, which you shouldn't be doing. Um, but I'm like, I don't even look down, like, to text. Like, I don't have to look down at my phone. Um, like I know exactly where everything is, but she's like, no, like you still need to pay attention. So I get it. You know, you don't want to have an accident where you could hurt other people or just hurt yourself. Yeah. So don't text and drive. <sighs> My dad does that. I think we're all guilty. My mom <laughs> puts on her makeup as she's driving. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I've you, you know, I saw this dude smoking <laughs> oh, yeah. while he was driving and halfway he was like falling asleep. Oh no. See, that's scary. He was behind us. Oh no. My mom was really. looking at him like. That's scary. And my dad almost got in a fight because somebody cut him off. And See? they were trying to fight him. <laughs> he, he, they got Has up. that ever happened to you? Yeah. Has no, I just, I'm like yelling inside my car. What if someone just barged in your office and like threw everything on the floor? And like, Would you throw hands? <laughs> <laughs> We'd have an issue if somebody comes into my office and throws everything off my And desk. they're like cussing you out. They're like, I can't say. Anything. Has a parent ever cussed you out? Yeah. Uh, Once. Once? Oh. Mm-hmm. Were you pissed off? I was just like... She okay. was yelling what the at fuck? me. No, what? Well, really? We're gonna Bro. cut it out. I've said other stuff on camera, and he Lord. cuts it out. Um, no, I think to me it's just okay. Like you have to be professional, and at the end of the day, like I, 
I'm a counselor here, so I would never want to like make the school look bad. Um, so sometimes you just have to like bite your tongue and there might be thoughts in your head, but you just bite your tongue and like, you just let people like just tell you whatever they want to tell you. And then you just have to realize it's not personal. Mm -hmm. You can't be lashing out at people. No, like I'm saying, I'm not oh, gonna, like, I'm not going to like be responding to a parent like that, you know? Yeah. What if it's outside school though? Like they just catch you at Costco. Yeah. What if? Have you ever gotten in a fight? Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. Not even in high school. Mm -mm. Almost. Mm -mm. Not have almost. You? Mm -mm. <laughs> I was always afraid of my mom. Mm -mm. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> nope. I was not gonna get in a fight. And I think to me, it's just. Um, in life, you have to understand that you're not going to like be liked by everybody and that's okay. That's right. Like you just, you just got to move on. Um, my mom always says in Spanish, no eres monedita de oro para caerle bien a todo mundo. Like you're not made out of gold to be liked by everybody. You have to translate that for Emma. Yeah. I'm oh not, yeah. I'm a non-Spanish speaker. Okay. So it's just, you're not made out of gold. You know, not everybody has to love you. Um, and you know, till this day, like, Hey, if somebody doesn't like me for X, Y, Z, then that's a you thing you know yeah, at you're the not end here of, to impress anyone i'm yeah. not here to like impress people i'm not here to um be liked be liked like at the end of the day like i do my job and outside of like work um i'm just me you know yeah, some you people some people life is too short life is too short and you're not going to be living um living your life to the standards of other people if people don't like you then that's on them you know you just got to keep doing you i feel life like to your fullest mm-hmm I feel like people worry too much about that, like what other, what people, other think. people think. But yeah. I think with you guys, it's social media. It's you know, I think it's yeah. social media. And again, like the comparing people, um, you, you like look at you open Instagram and you first thing you see, it's like all these Instagram models. And like I could speak for like girls, you start know, you, insecure. you start getting insecure Comparing because then you're like, bodies, well, yeah. Why do I have this? Why is it like I'm overweight? I'm this, I'm that. Like I've been there. Like, and I, I feel like sometimes I still have my own insecure moments. Um, but you just got to remember that we're all different. Um, and I know sometimes the people that have the prettiest bodies aren't always happy. I'd rather be happy, you know? Just being me. Yeah. Everyone's beautiful in their own way. Absolutely. And somebody. And somebody, um, you don't have to change the way you look uh, for a relationship. Um, there is a person that's going to come that's going to like you just the way you are. So there's no need to change or like change certain things about you or change how you look just to please a, a male or a female. Like yeah. you don't have to do that. There's someone for everyone. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> So who are we going to put Hugo on with? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, this is a podcast about <laughs> Evan. Lord. We Lord. could cut certain uh, stuff out. Oh, my God. Any other questions? <sighs> Your first relationship. Yeah. How did yeah. that go? What? <laughs> let's get into that. Let's get personal. Let's get well, let's personal. Get, let's get Ashley personal. Like. Yeah. Let's Lord. get real personal. <laughs> Looking at the camera right now like, how? <laughs> Two minute break. <laughs> uh, my first relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your yeah. first relationship. How my, was it? My what was the experience. What? What, what was the trauma? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, my first relationship. Um, I was a sophomore in high school. We were together for a year, and that's all. Why did it end? I never. Um, speak about about past things they're in okay. the past for a reason yeah um you know so things in my past like it just didn't work out it didn't work out yeah mm -hmm. it wasn't meant to be it wasn't meant to be now she has zeke now i have zeke and that's your boyfriend's name the that's football man football. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> like, the football man oh yes he he was coaching football is that's that what you're saying yeah. that's football? what he does mm -hmm. so he is a trainer um at a charter school so yeah and then he was coaching football this past season so yeah is he any good huh is he good at coaching did they win 
So, well, I mean, with coaching, you can't like. <laughs> Does he get like mad? Like, so my, throw stuff around? No, like my boyfriend, like, it's funny because the person that I know him as and then seeing him on the sidelines, two <laughs> completely different people. Um, Do you guys ever make like eye contact? Like, no, he's all, like, he's, he's the, focused on that. Like, he's focused. That's, like, I'm, I'm not going to be like, I'm here. You're I'm like here. a random person at that point. No, right no it's just, you know, at the end of the day, it's kind of like as a counselor, like I wouldn't want somebody like if I'm talking, if I'm having a serious conversation with a student, like I wouldn't want him coming and being like, I'm here, I'm here. Like, no, you I know, like, wing stop. no, like, oh like football, football is, is his passion is oh. something that he likes. So, you know, you just got to let him be and let him be the coach that he is. But yeah, they're two different people, like my boyfriend and the coach. What's your guys' story? How'd you guys meet? <laughs> Were you guys like at, at oh. the movie theaters? He's all like, you want to buy you something? No. <laughs> Were you at a football game? No, it was after graduation last year. Oh, oh last year. I thought, last year. I thought she made her own. No, I thought graduation. Two thousand. Like, hold on, two thousand. Like two thousand. 20 hold on what year are we in 2023 well, three. so we just people who forget their anniversary no 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 no. <laughs> so we met june 3rd 2022 oh. yes yeah, so after graduation what time what time, <laughs> what time? it was at night the graduation oh. um graduation was very long that year um so we all went like i was out with like some of the like montebello high school people um and yeah we ended up meeting and it's a a trip because his nephew was my student i was his counselor in 2016 mm. and then i ended up finding out like i went to high school with his cousin so it's it's wild how you meet people but then they've always kind of like been somehow around. been around somehow there's a connection mm -hmm. so yeah we're going on a year and a half wild congratulations thanks to many more oh i thought we were gonna start like dancing oh that one that one <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i know i was gonna ask you a question but i forgot what was it oh, oh do you have a um do you have a kid do you have any children? Do you have? Oh, do I have kids? Yeah. No, no. Do Just you look forward to having a kid anytime soon? Whoa! I could have sworn you had a kid. I have all of you guys. That's, we are her kids. That's more than enough right a now. Baby Evans. Oh baby my! Evans. A baby Andrea. Oh my God! Mm -hmm. No, no kids. I used to want six kids. <gasps> I want you still want that? I want a lot of kids. No, and then I started working at a high school, so I'm oh. maybe two. Oh, you already have kids, huh? Like <laughs> no, school. like I think it's just when you think about like having kids, like the responsibility. You know, they have to like you put them through school, you put them through college. Like you want to make sure that you're like an involved parent. And so yeah, that so they succeed in mm -hmm. life. Yeah, so no, no kids for me. No baby Andreas yet. Someday. 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 Do you want like boy first or girl first? Or, it, or matter. it doesn't matter. Like it, it doesn't. It doesn't. Ma it doesn't matter. Um, just, just give them to you. <laughs> no, whatever is like given to you. Oh, whatever's given. I was yeah, all. No, whatever. No, no, no. I was all. What? <laughs> what are you into? I know. What are you no, thinking no, about? No, no, no. I <laughs> say whatever is given to you, like by God or anything, like. I, I absolutely. You know, like I. I just don't feel like it's like again whatever whatever's meant for you will come like yeah. if i need a baby andrea then a baby andrea if i need a little boy then i need a little boy but i'd probably be a better boy mom you know mm. just my love of sports and yeah. i don't know i mean you, do you want your kids to be in sports um i would enforce them to it's something that's by their choice it's their choice you know i'm not gonna like force them to be like you have to do this like i know growing up i did ballet and i did swimming um were you good at it yeah. You were good at ballet. I loved ballet. Like, I, I absolutely ballet. loved I ballet. It. The only part I hated was the shoes that you get that have the wood at the bottom. Oh um, those really hurt my feet. Um, but I, I loved ballet. They still ballet. use those? No, no. Those no. are old fashioned, huh? What? She's not that no, old. No, no, no. I'm saying, like. No, that's when you, like, so when you're on your, in ballet, you're on your tippy toes. Like, they actually have wood at the bottom. And that's how you're able, like, to, yeah. Did it hurt? It did. Like, it messes with your feet a lot. Um, and then I stopped ballet. I did swimming. And then I did karate. And then, like, up to, like, 
a year and a half ago I was boxing. Is there anything you would like to learn in like terms of like a, a sport or like a, like fighting or language or anything like that? I want to learn how to snowboard. I've always wanted to learn how to snowboard, but everybody tries to tell me like, oh, if you go, it's dangerous. You might break a leg. Like- you might do something. So then people scare me. <laughs> um, snowboarding seems fun. Um, a language? Chinese. Probably like Mandarin. Mandarin. Like I, I feel, obviously I speak English. I speak Spanish. So I just feel like the next top um, language that is spoken would be Mandarin. But yeah, I don't, I don't know if I could learn that. Was Spanish your first language? Spanish was my first language. My mom taught me Spanish first, um, and then I like English in school. Mm-hmm. Do people ever talk like Spanish around you, and they think like you don't know Spanish at all? Yes. So I think and you just l- laugh, or no? I think a lot of the times, like even like when like parents come in or they call me, and I think you, I I think people have this perception when you see my name, Andrea Evans. They think of you as a white woman or something. I mean, I don't know what they think of me (laughs) as, but I think they, like, they for sure don't think I speak Spanish. So then when, like, they say, like, habla español, and then I just start speaking, they're like, oh. (gasps) Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And we'll unsuppress the sound effect. (laughs) That's like some Michael Myers. What? Yeah, that was a little scary. Is there like a happier one? <laughs> there's, there's this one. Look very soon. <laughs> that made. Also, oh. That's like something we should have used for the haunted house. What? We could have. How do you think Renaissance did on the haunted house? Yeah. We you were the best. That's not even a thing. <laughs> I was asking Miss <laughs> Evans. Oh, sorry, Miss Evans. Um, I think um, you guys did amazing. You know, it's just. Uh. <laughs> and no one else was throwing chairs around. What? Lord. Okay. You don't even want to know. Um, no, I think Renaissance, you know, this year, Renaissance from last year. Last year, we had tw- about 20 kids in Renaissance. This year, we're over 40. Um, so I think it's definitely like that dedication that you guys put in to make a, like our school a better place. It's you could definitely tell, you know, you guys definitely put in the work. Um, you guys do whatever we ask of you guys. And you guys have been amazing. Mm-hmm. Have you ever traveled? I love to travel. So I have this goal. I have to get to 40 countries by the time I'm 40. Yeah, 23, aren't you? I'm at 20. Yeah. So I have five more years to get to 20 more. Why five more? Because she's it's, it's, is that a goal? Oh, it's is 40, that, oh. 40 countries by the time I'm 40 years old. So oh. I'm 35. So I have five years to go. Oh. Is you ever been to Italy? Yes. Is growing old scary for you? Not really. Um, I think growing old, it's again, you, you carry experiences with you that nobody could take away. You know, it's a, it's a beautiful thing in life that we all have to go through it. Um, yeah, I'm not afraid of getting old. Are you scared of that? Mm-mm. No, no. I, I mean, why, why worry about something that I can't control? It's yeah. inevitable. It's inevitable. So it's not like I could say like, no, please keep me here forever. No, like when. When my purpose is done, then that's you know. Do you do you um <laughs> sorry? Huh? Do you know what your purpose in life is? Do you? Oh, we're getting deep. <laughs> um, <laughs> a little deep. My purpose in life, I think now, like right now, as a counselor, is just inspiring people, inspiring people, guiding people, guiding the younger generation. Um, do I know like what my full purpose is? I'm not sure. You know how I must say like your purpose? Like, do you mm-hmm. think like if when you leave this earth, like you change something, like make the a world difference. somehow? Like, yeah, like Absolutely. I think, I think every, every year as a counselor, that's my main goal, you know? And like I said, if I'm able to make the difference in one person's life, then my mission has been accomplished. You know, obviously you expect to do that with more people. Um, but but yeah, every every day that like I come to work, um, it's just like, OK, like, let's make this world a better place. Um, let me be there for somebody that maybe feels that nobody is there for them. 
Um, so I just, that's how I, I live life. I always um, say, be the person you needed when you were younger. Is that like a quote you live by? Mm-hmm. Be the person you needed when you were younger, you know? I know a lot of the times, like with students, they have a hard time maybe um, maybe opening up to their parents. And I get it, you know, when you talk about like mental health or when you talk about relationships because you feel like your parents are going to judge you um, because of what, what you say. Um, so I think just in being that person that, again, the no judgment, safe space, like people come talk to me about everything that they're going through, whether it's relationships, whether it's anxiety, depression, whatever the case might be. So again, it's being that person that if I would have had maybe when I was younger, I would have been maybe a little more successful, you know, or a better student, not more successful because I think again, my journey brought me to this point. Yeah. You you think you're where you need to be? Right now, yes. And again, I'm a firm believer. Like I've been saying, things happen when they're supposed to happen. So I know sometimes like kids will ask me, when are you going to get married? When are you going to have a kid? When are you this? And I'm like, you know, things I... Things happen. When I was younger, I think when I graduated high school, like I had a plan in my head. I was like, okay, by 22, I'm going to be married. By 30, I'm going to have a house, two kids, and all of this stuff. None has happened, you know? So I stopped having a timeline for myself and just letting things go with the flow. Like yeah, whenever people have that mentality to like and plan ahead. And you can't because I think you'll end up being disappointed and then you'll end up being frustrated. So it's just better off like going with the flow of things. You could only control what's in your power. Um, like going to school, working, doing all of that, but everything else, like when the time comes, the time will come. Yeah. And I think also a big part of it is controlling how you perceive things and how you um your emotions and when things happen to you absolutely sometimes it's people often say like why is this always happening to me you know and I think people ask themselves that and lately I've kind of transformed that mentality and have said what is this trying to teach me well now that we're finishing up Miss Evans is there anything else you would like to say any advice you would like to leave us I think just for everybody to be authentically you, don't compare yourself to other people. Um, And especially for my seniors, let's enjoy these last six months together. Have fun. Pass your classes. Finish credit recovery. Um, These last six months will will fly by. And to grades 9 through 11, enjoy your high school journey. It goes by really fast. And get close to the people um, here on campus. She's going to give us a speech on June 5th. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) All right. Thank you, guys. Well, thank you for being Such here with us. So unfortunate that this has to come to the end. Yes, Seriously, like. it's okay. You have me six more months. Yeah, we're we'll, all good. We'll have you back on the podcast. Okay. Okay. We'll, we'll see you on the stage on June fifth, giving a speech. Oh, yeah, brother. We'll see okay, he's gonna hold you to that. Okay. All right, everybody. <laughs> this has been chatting with the counselor. Oh, no, wrong one. Wrong one.